Some of you have asked me some very specific questions about using an external microphone like this one, which will be in the video in a cameo appearance, and using it with a decibel meter app on your smartphone or on your tablet. And this video may not be for you today if you're not interested in that topic. But if you want to know how to capture or try to capture decibels in an app when maybe they're low frequency or you're just not capturing enough and you want to get closer to it with something like a lavalier, this video may be for you. Now, let me tell you right now, I didn't get conclusive results. I did not get consistent results, but I'm going to show you the sorts of things that did come up for me on both an Android and an iPhone so that you can maybe skip past my mistakes or even figure out what would work well for you. So if you've ever tried to measure noise or you're trying to record it, you probably know that some sounds that you hear in person might not be audible when you make a recording on your smartphone. That's why sometimes using a lavalier microphone might be helpful because a lot of smartphones have noise cancellation in them, and that's a good thing when you make a phone call to someone in a noisy location. It suppresses some of that background noise, but it's not so helpful when you're trying to catch a vibration noise in your walls. A lavalier microphone has a different pickup pattern. It's omnidirectional, so it picks up sounds in all directions, and it's also very sensitive. You can tape the microphone on a wall or on a window and then connect it with the cable to your smartphone and you might be able to pick up more of the sound. And this can be really handy when you're trying to capture something like a droning sound from a fan or a TV noise from a shared wall in an apartment. Here's a quick example using a dishwasher. First, this is how a smartphone records the dishwasher noise with the built-in microphone. It's basically airborne noise. And now I'll put a lavalier microphone against the dishwasher door. Hear the difference? It's a lot louder with a lot more detail. This is basically what it might sound like if the machine wasn't insulated. In this video, I'm going to test the lavalier with two different decibel apps. On iPhone, Decibel Meter, and on an Android tablet, Smarter Noise Pro. But you'll also see that the results were sometimes inconsistent and inconclusive. When I ran my first tests, I used the exact same microphone for each device. This was a set of iRig microphones from IK Multimedia. One difference though, on the iPhone, I used an adapter for the lightning port because the iPhone doesn't have a headphone jack, but the Android tablet has a headphone jack, so I used it. The first thing I noticed was the Android showed a much lower decibel level than the iPhone, and both of them were set to DVC. But the Android was showing about 50 to 57 decibels, and the iPhone was showing about 89 to 95 decibels. That's a huge difference. So I found this very surprising, and I tried to figure out why I got such different results. First, I tried switching to a different lavalier microphone on the Android. I used the same mic from the beginning of this video. It's called a Clippy and it's from micbooster.com in the UK. It's a little bigger and a little bulkier than the iRig. One more difference, the Clippy is a TRS microphone. It's a mono microphone with just two rings on it. This microphone is ideal for a camera. The iRig is different. It has a TRRS plug. That means it has three rings on it and it can support stereo which is ideal for a smartphone. The decibel reading with the Clippy was about the same, maybe even a little lower, ranging from 49 to 53 decibels. So then I plugged the iRig microphone back into the Android again, and suddenly the decibels ranged from 59 to 65 decibels. That's still not close to what the iPhone was getting, but also notice I changed the viewing mode on the Android screen. This time it showed the time lapse instead of the frequency on the chart. And now the readings were about nine decibels higher than before. But the readings should be the same, no matter what view I'm in. Anyway, the iPhone and the Android had very different results with the same microphone. 
Then I unplugged the microphone from the iPhone to use the built-in microphone. This brought the decibel reading down, about 56 to 59 decibels. When I unplugged the microphone from the Android and used that built-in microphone, the Android showed 48 to 52 decibels. So the discrepancy is still there, but not as dramatic as it is with the external microphones. I personally think that 60 decibels is more realistic than 48 decibels because typical room noise in a quiet room is 35 decibels, and the dishwasher made plenty of noise during these tests. Okay, then I thought that maybe the difference in the readings might be caused by the port I was using. Remember, I was using a headphone jack with the Android, but I didn't have a USB-C adapter to use the USB port. I needed to compare each of these devices with the same kind of port, so I ordered a headphone to USB-C adapter from Amazon. Two days later, I had adapters for both devices. This time, I decided to test them by taping the microphones on a window. The iPhone's lavalier was plugged into the lightning port and the Android's microphone was plugged into the USB-C port. The iPhone registered noise in the 60 decibel range, and I thought this was realistic because even though the room seemed quiet, there's noise outside the window. There's a busy street a block away. There's airplanes flying overhead. So with the microphone taped on the window, this made sense to me. But the Android plugged into the USB-C port with the microphone also taped to the window was showing zero decibels, which is not possible. Once again, I switched microphones on the Android. I plugged the Clippy microphone into the USB-C port, and I even added a TRRS adapter for good luck. But still, the decibel reading was abnormally low. It only went up when I clapped my hands, but not as high as the iPhone decibel app went up. I also tested the same USB-C adapter with headphones on the Android. The headphones worked fine. The problem was the microphone. After all this trial and error, it was time to run the dishwasher again. This time I added two handheld decibel meters along with the iPhone and the Android. And I decided to use the headphone jack again with the Android, not the USB-C port. So here, from left to right, we've got the Android tablet, the iPhone, a handheld decibel meter measuring dBc, and on the far right, a BAFX meter measuring dBA because it doesn't offer dBC. The Android with the external microphone goes up to about 59 decibels. The dBC meter is about 55 decibels. The iPhone is once again running very high at about 85 decibels. And the dBA meter is about 49 decibels. And one more test. I switched to a mode on the Android where I could record video and audio from the Android while running the app. I meant to do this actually on every test, but I accidentally pushed the wrong button to start most of these tests. So here's a video that I made from the Android, and it starts with the decibel reading while the external microphone is plugged in, and the noise goes up to about 67 decibels. Then I pulled the mic out of the headphone jack and the Android continues to record the dishwasher with the built-in microphone. The decibel level drops to about 50 dBc. I actually think this might be the most realistic of all the readings I got. And it's another example of how the decibels vary depending on which mode you're in with the Smarter Noise Pro app, which isn't ideal. So in conclusion, yes, you can measure noise with an external microphone and a decibel app but the results might be inconsistent. If your device has a headphone jack for your microphone, use it. The USB-C port on my Android didn't seem to work with a microphone. An external lavalier mic with a cable is more sensitive than a built-in mic. So use it in situations where you can't capture noise very easily with the built-in mic. Some decibel meter applications have a calibration setting. This might be helpful when you have a reliable decibel meter to compare against and you want your decibel app to be in sync with it. I looked at the calibration setting for Smarter Noise Pro, but I continued to use the default setting. The developers who make Smarter Noise Pro have made several updates to their app since our first soundproof video about it. I think they're working on improvements.
and I think I'll contact them and let them know about the discrepancies I found. That's it. I know this was a long video, but hopefully some of my trial and error will spare you from having to go through the same thing. I wish you success in capturing noise data. And for more information about noise and acoustics, visit soundproofist.com.